qualified enough and a promise keeper enough that I can lean and depend on you. God, I'm able to bring every one of my troubles and my trials to you and not just glorify you even right now, God. I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise even on another Sunday morning where we haven't been together for a while, but God, you have afforded us. God, not because we've been so good or so kind, but what a privilege it is for us to be able to enter in and to be able to worship you on such a time, even like this. God, you're still in charge of it all. You're still doing great things, and despite what it looks like, God, we're just going to continue to look to you, the heal from what's coming our help, because we realize that we really do need you, God. Yes. We can't do anything in and of ourselves, right but we rely on you. Yes. And if you're watching this morning, whatever it is that you may be dealing with or going through, he said that you could cast your cares upon him because he cared for you. Yes. So even now, just open up your heart and have faith enough to believe that he's got your best interest at heart. That he's still working on your behalf. Yes, and sometimes we go to God and we have requests and, and we're asking for things, but by faith we just want to tell him thank you. We want to speak things as if they already are, as if they already were. So we're not going to really ask him for much, ask him for the same thing that we've been asking him before through this whole COVID ordeal, but we're going to start thanking him. We thank him for still being a miracle worker. We thank him for still being able to give signs and wonder. We thank him for still being able to do everything that we need him to do. And then more, he said, I'm able to do abundantly above anything that you can ever ask or pray for. So even now, God, we come to thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you. And you've been so good to us. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. First of all, God, we want to say thank you that you have not given us as our sins have deserved. But every morning you wake us with a new set of mercy. Yes. And here we are on a brand new Sunday morning that we didn't think that we'd see, but God, because of grace and because of mercy, you've allowed us another opportunity to dwell in your presence. God, here we are, we're just a few in number, but you said that if we would touch and agree, believing on the same thing, that you'd be able to be a God in the midst. So now, God, we didn't come for any shape, form, or fashion to be seen or to be heard, but we come to glorify you, God. We come to tell you how grateful we are that you have given your son to go to Calvary on our behalf. We're thankful for life and life more abundantly. We're thankful for your healing power, your delivering power, your saving power, your grace, and your mercy. So now, God, we're not going to tell you what to do. We're just going to tell you that whatever you decide to do, that whatever's in your will, help us to be satisfied. So we thank you right now, oh God, for everything that's going to happen throughout the day, tomorrow, and throughout our life. God, we know that COVID doesn't have the last say, but that you do. And we cast our cares upon you right now, oh God, asking you to have mercy. God bless our pastor that he has to come and he has to preach and sometimes he has to preach to himself knowing, knowing that he's going through some different challenges and, and changes throughout the COVID situation. But God, because you call him and because you have qualified him, he's able to preach your word. Now unto you, oh God, who's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before to the Father of oh God who is in heaven. God, we just give you glory now. We lift up our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and our voices, and we say, have your way in this place, in our hearts, and in your service. In Jesus' name, amen.
throne right today. Come on, good morning, Philippians. We love you and we thank God for you. And we're so excited about the things of God and all that He has been doing. You know, we're still missing one another, being in each other's presence, but we're still under the power and the providence of God. And so we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we thank God for you being with us this morning. I want you to be evangelistic as we share today. And so uh, just take your finger and whatever means of social media which you're listening by, just take and hit the share button if you're on Facebook and share it and, and make sure that people have an opportunity to receive the word of God uh, through your sharing. So right now, Philippians, just share, just share, just share. Take about two minutes and just share. Just five, just five, just share, just share so that people can hear the word of God. That's what we ought to do, is to be able to share the word of God with those who are around us. And so this is the vehicle through which we might do it. Come on, let's bless the Lord uh, wherever we are. There is a word found in the gospel according to Luke, chapter one, beginning at verse 26, from the New International Version. The gospel according to Luke, uh, chapter one, beginning at verse 26. Amen. It reads thusly, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel of Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at, this, at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come to you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered, Marry your word to me. May your word be to me fulfilled. Then the angel left her. I want to talk about Mary or a woman worthy of honor. A woman worthy of honor. Uh, this being Christmas season as we are celebrating the first month of December wherein people are in a unique situation from where we once were, might not be visiting malls or other retail facilities, but now we are going by way of the internet to shop for things that can be a blessing to others under the tree. And I wanted to share and interrupt your shopping for the moment and give us a glimpse and stories or a characters in the Bible as it relates to the Christian or the Christmas season that will probably and hopefully empower you to understand that divine sovereignty does not negate human responsibility. God is God. He can do what he wants to, when he wants to, how he wants to, through whom he wants to, to whom he wants to, because he's God. But God, in his infinite wisdom, has allowed divinity to merge or co-labor with humanity to bring forth the divine providence or manifestation of that which has been revealed. 
You know in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah says, For unto us a child is born, yes. unto us a son is given. You know in the word of God it says Emmanuel, for it means God with us. Yes. And so I wanted to share uh, from a different perspective a cast of people uh, who are a part of the Christmas production that will empower us to understand that we are useful and usable by God. Here is in this first chapter of Luke a real story that many times is leaped over or brushed over just to get to a certain point that we feel is and is appropriate to the Christmas season and that we just move forward to glimpse at it, but I wanted to park in it for the moment right. and share with you a woman who is a part of the Christmas production where divinity has gotten together with humanity and showing us the blessings that comes thereof. First of all, in verse uh, 28, we get a glimpse at Mary, God, the angel has come. He is speaking with uh, Mary and he says to her, watch this here, that blessed or in the NIV, greetings, watch this here, uh, when it goes to and it shares with her, it shares with her in verse 28. It gives to her greetings that are a blessing to her. But when we share it in other translations, it says blessed. Now the word, when we look at it, the first thing we see about this woman of honor whose name has been identified as Mary, it gives us a blessed opportunity to see, first of all, she was a woman of favor. Yes. Favor, when we look at it, the angel says blessed. It comes from the word eulo jello, jail. It's a eulogy. It comes from the word eulogy to speak well of, to celebrate with praise, to cause, uh, to prosper. A uh, favored of God. She's greeted and instantaneously we get a glimpse at the fact that she's celebrated as a woman of honor and we see that she is a recipient of God's favor. And I want you to know something, beloved, as we look at this woman who is a recipient of the favor of God, we get a glimpse at what favor is really all about. Now, it does give to us an understanding that, first of all, we know a little bit about this Mary who is blessed and favored of God. She's a woman that's abstinent. She's a virgin. She has purity. She's consecrated. She's sanctified. And what it means, she has been set aside for someone. And when we look at it, not only do we see the abstinence of her, we see the commitment that she has because her sanctified or setting apart is further given to us of her commitment because she's engaged to be married. And then not only do we see that, we see that she is a descendant of David. So she's abstinent, which is consecrated and sanctified and set apart. She's committed. She is engaged to be married to Joseph. And she comes from the lineage of David. We see she's favored. But can I suggest to you, beloved, that many times people misconstrue what it means to be favored. Watch this here. Watch this here. When we look at the text, the text says the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. You are highly favored. Watch this here. She's blessed among all women to be favored as the vehicle or the conduit through which God would give the world the greatest gift of all. But watch this here. Even though she is favored, favored is not predicated upon who you are or how good you may be or how special you are, 
God can give his favor to whomever he chooses to, and he can do what he does through whomever he wants to. And so when we look at Mary, do not look at Mary's resume of being a person of abstinence, one who is committed to be married, and a descendant of a royal lineage. Look at Mary as just the person whom God gave favor or found favor in. And can I suggest to you, beloved, the reason why, sisters, I wanted to share that with you, because some of us do not have the same biogra biographical sketch of life as she does. But can I tell you, it does not matter what you have been, what you have done, with whom you have done it, no matter what people think about you, the blessing is, is that when God needs a conduit, God can use you to get it. You don't believe it? Look at this here. When God wanted to deliver Israel out of the hands of the enemy, he had his, his, his people who had gone into a, uh, into a the, the land of the enemy and, and needed shelter, found Rahab, who was a harlot, who had become the conduit through which God used to give them safety from the enemy. Can I suggest to you, beloved, when we look at the people that God has used to deliver us and be a blessing to us, it's not predicated always based upon what they have been or what they have not been. Sometimes God used the least, the most unlikely person to do the greatest work for the kingdom. But in this instance, we happen to see that here to amplify and magnify the miracle of the gift that God gives us, uh, he defies nature and he impregnates by way of the Holy Spirit a woman who had never known a man. He gives to her a, 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 a baby for a woman who had never been married. Can I suggest to you that back in the day of Mary's time, women who had found themselves in a pregnant situation before marriage was ridiculed and become outcast. And not only to add insult to injury, here Mary is, a single sister who has been betrothed to a man in waiting who's ready to get married to her. Now watch this here, beloved, that despite of all of that, we get to see what God is able to do. God can do what he wants to, how he wants to, and he doesn't need our permission to do it. He blesses whom he wants to bless. He delivers through whom he wants to deliver. He gives hope to whom who he wants to give hope. And thank God that we look at favor, as Dr. Dennis Ward says, it ain't fair, but it sure works for me. And so number two, we look at this text here in verse 28. It says that we see she's favored of God. But then number two, we see her faith. Now watch this here, beloved. First of all, you look at the text. Here's an angel coming to Mary and saying to Mary that you get ready to give birth to a son that you should call his name Jesus. Mary is honest enough and says to, to this angel, uh, 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 I, I, how can this be? How can this happen? How will it happen? Uh, 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 what are you going to do to make it happen since I am a virgin and I've never known a man? Now watch her faith because sometimes we get caught up in the broadness of the story that we miss out on nuggets that's valuable to help us as believers to know that God can do some stuff that humanity can't comprehend. Watch this here. Notice what she says that gives us a glimpse of her faith. She didn't say, not if it will happen. She says, or asks, how will it happen? There's a difference between the question. If means there's doubt. If means that you boxed in the ability of God and have been uh, 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 isolated into a mindset that suggests that God can't do what he says he can do. But if you look at what she says, it is not an if or a doubt or a possibility that he may be mighty. She said, how would he do it? Now watch this here. I believe God is going to make a way. I just don't know how God is going to make the way. 
y'all, y'all, I believe God is going to deliver us from the hands of this evil virus. I just don't know how he's going to do it. Oh, y'all don't look at me straight. I believe God is going to heal, deliver, and set people free, but I don't know exactly how he's going to do it. Sometimes God does it supernaturally, but then there's other times that God used humanity, known as physicians and doctors, uh, to prescribe medication uh, to help you get to your, 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 from your hurt to your healing. I don't know how he's going to do it, but by faith, I believe he's going to do it. And watch what Mary says uh, in verse 34. She said, how would this be? Since I'm a virgin, I've never been with a man. How will this happen? Mary is giving us a glimpse of faith. Faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. Faith is taking God at his word. But even though you have faith, it doesn't mean you figured everything out about how God was going to do what he said he was going to do. Sometimes God gives you an immediate answer because he says to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and overtake you and you shall conceive. Sometimes God gives an instant answer. But then there's other times we don't know the how or can't figure it out until after it's happened. Testimonies that come from many believers come after their deliverance, not during deliverance. Now, some of them come during deliverance because there are some people say, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I believe. And that's a testimony that you're steadfast and unmovable. But then there are some testimonies that you tell later on, I didn't know how he was going to do it, but now since I'm on the other side of through, let me test to tell you what God did for me. Some things that God does, he gives instant revelation. But then some things God gives the revelation, but he puts a pause in the manifestation. Look at this. Faith. How will it happen? And let me tell you something. I like that because Mary shows her humility. And many times as believers, uh, we have forfeited our blessings because we take too much stock in ourselves. <laughs> Mary, though a virgin, never became presumptuous that she was deserving of what God was getting ready to do. Oh, come on, bless me now. And I know some of us, we pray to Mary, and he says, you want to get a prayer through to Jesus? Pray to Mary. Well, we don't, we don't believe that. I, and let me say, this is not a debate, doctrinal differences, but I need to tell you, the Bible teaches us that when we need to go to prayer, he said, I will pray to the Father. Jesus said, I'll pray to the Father. He'll send you another comforter, and he'll come. When you pray, I go to the Father in the name of Jesus, and he does it. And can I suggest to you, beloved, that if you really want to see a woman of honor, she's a woman that, that is favored by God, but then she's a woman who has faith in God. How will it happen? Well, watch this here. Not only does she have faith, not only does she favor, but when you look at verse 38, uh, when you look at verse 38, you see her future. Watch this here, and I'm not going to be long. It says here, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answers, may your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Y'all missed that. Sometimes we move past certain things, but when we look at it, we see her future. She says, the first thing I need you to understand about the understanding of the future is, is that you made a promise, and I believe that you're going to do it. Because in verse 37, we see the promise, and the promise says, the angel said, for no word from God will ever fail. And whenever God promises you something, baby, you can go ahead and cast a check, even if you don't have it in your account yet, because God's word will never fail. Amen. God's word. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But his word shall forever stand. And if you're going to be a woman of honor, 
If you're going to be a woman that's favored, a woman that has faith, you got to understand that your future is hinged upon the fact that you have a God that keeps his promise. Yes. Yes. And can I help you out? That's right, yeah. The reason why you need to know that you need to adhere and hold on to the promise of God, even though you got faith in your favor and you expect to get to your future, sometimes from one place to another, from the present to the future, there's some pitfalls and some hardships and some situations that's, that's, that's not real pleasant. In fact, they're painful. Because after all, you do know I told you that this Mary is married, is pledged to be married to Joseph. She had never slept with him, had not yet married him, but now she's pregnant and he's got to be explained to by her that the Holy Ghost gave this to me. And I need to suggest to you, stop trying to make scripture so nice and neat that you don't have the anxieties that lie within the passage. Because when you look at the passage, there is nothing there but anxiety. Because after all, it doesn't matter how holy you are, how do you explain, Mary, to Joseph, whom you've never been with and have yet to marry, that you pray? Because even though at this time that she's interacting with the angel and the Holy Spirit is doing his work, in this time, yeah. while she is getting an understanding from God what's getting ready to happen, then she don't know that while the angel is talking to her, God has already sent a messenger to Joseph. Yeah. Yes, and I'll deal with that next week. Yes, but the fact of the matter is, is that if you are a child of God and a woman of honor, there are things you must need to know. Your favor is not because of your perfection. That's right. You are favored because God found favor in you. He just gave it to you. And your faith, watch this here, Let, watch this here, in faith, you have to have enough faith to trust God when you can't track him down. Enough faith to believe God when it's bewildering what he's telling you because Mary sets an example not if it will happen. She says, but how would it happen? You just got trusted. You got to have that kind of faith. But then I got to go. Here's the future. The future is I can make it through because I got a promise. And the reason why she can make it through is because verse uh, 37 tells us for no word from God will ever fail. Y'all didn't get it. Y'all didn't get it. Y'all didn't get it. And then was because she needed to have something to hold on and keep her because there's an antagonistic situating, uh, situation awaiting her. But watch this here. If you have faith, you can trust God even when trouble comes. And the reason why she can hold on to her future is because she knows the same God that made the promise is the same God that handles pain. Focus. Let me close this here. And this is where I close if you really want to be a woman of honor. Look at her response in verse 38. It says, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answers, may your word to me be fulfilled. Watch this here. There's a lot in there and I'm getting ready to go. Here's, here's what's got to happen. That if I'm going to be have a future, I've got to make sure that I surrender. My God. If you want to be a conduit through which the gift of God comes forth and blesses people within your life, in your concentric circles of contact, you have to have a spirit of surrender. Yes, yeah. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I surrender freely give. Right. I surrender all. Yes. Everything I have, everything I don't have, I'm completely God's. Right. It belongs to him. Yeah. I'm about done. Can I give you one more thing? Hmm. She surrenders, but then she shows us that never get so big in your favor that you're not small enough to be a servant. Because when you look at the text, she says, I am the Lord's servant. 
I'm a slave to God. And whatever his will is for my life, I will serve him and accept it. And can I tell you this here? Because of that, she experienced the grace of God. Because you know the story, Joseph didn't put her away. She believed in the word of God. And the grace of God, she has the favor of God. But she believed in the word of God, whatever God says, I'll do it. But a real woman of honor not only has experienced the grace of God and believed in the word of God, they've been used by the spirit of God. And if you want to be a blessing to someone else That's right. in your life, be the conduit through which God gives the gift. Be the conduit through which God can use people yeah. to make them understand that the love of Christmas and the greatest gift you can give to them is the gift of introduction to the Christ that can save their lives. It's not about what's on the tree, under the tree, rather. What happens is, is be, be grateful about who, who came and was going to go on the tree. That's right. And he's the gift that keeps on giving. Yes. I pray that that message blessed you. I didn't do anything dramatic, just wanted to share. Because we need to get the basics and the main thing, the main thing. Sisters, you're favorite of God. Your, your background may not be squeaky clean like Mary's. But God specializes in working through people that others would cast aside. Trust God. Be like Mary. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I believe he will. And whatever God is directing in your life right now, it's not if he can, it's how he will. And when you get to that place, but here's the future. The future is surrender to him and serve him. And you'll experience the grace of God, the favor. You'll believe the word of God, our foundation. And you'll be used by the Holy Spirit to carry you through your future. I pray that that word bless you. And if you are a person who's listening right now, that you will allow Jesus Christ to come into your life. What I'm being right now is a conduit through which, given the testimony of the goodness of Christ, make an invitation for you to come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life. If you do that, you will be saved. You can call us here at the church or you can inbox us on our Facebook page. You can write a note on our YouTube, whatever way you need to get to us. Go on our website and let us know that you need to know Jesus. And we want to be a blessing to you. That's right. God bless you. We pray that God, this message will be a blessing to you. Before we leave today, I want to invite you all to really join me in being a blessing to our neighbors. And let me tell you what I mean by that. The real love of a believer loves people enough that we will do what is necessary to protect others. We've made a controversy out of this thing here. It's a mask. It helps me from affecting you and you possibly affecting me. So I pray that Christians will get to a place of obedience. Do what the doctors say. That's not lessening your faith. It's just giving you an understanding that God anointed them to give us insight. Stop all these house parties, be it whisk, spades, figure out how to do some of this stuff online. Just settle down and hear the voice of God so that he might be a blessing to you, amen? At this time, let us prepare ourselves for our tithes and offering. Philippians, we still have an obligation 
to honor the word of God. The Bible teaches us to bring the tithe into the storehouse that there might be meat in mine house. Prove me not herewith, says the Lord of hosts, that I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You shall have, have room enough to receive. Listen, since we have paid off the building, some of you all have taken a posture that we've done all we need to do. Uh, your giving is not predicated upon a mortgage. It's based upon the word of God. Yeah. And ministry has to go forward. And when we started our final stretch of paying the building off, we said that we want to make room for ministry. So we're getting rid of debt, and now we have a better chance to make disciples. So I want to ask you to please, sisters and brothers, our deacons will be here uh, beginning at 11 o'clock all the way up to about 12:15. Please drive by and bring your tithes and offering, or you can go on Cash App. It's the dollar sign Philippian Lima, or you can go on Giblify, Philippian uh, Lima, and you'll see a picture of our sanctuary and myself in it, and give your tithes and offering. Do it right now. Don't wait till later. Do it right now. Don't wait till Monday or Tuesday. Do it right now so that God, uh, the Bible says on the first day of the week, set aside. So it's time to do that. I love you all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face continue to shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.